Hello and welcome to this first demonstration from Writing a Project Plan Part 1, Developing Outcomes and Objectives, Booklet 1 of the Sustainability for Member-Based Organization resource books, put together by WeGo. This first demonstration is going to touch on problem analysis and objectives analysis. This is meant only as a quick overview of the concepts, so please, for more details and instructions, refer to the booklet one. But just to get started, and before we touch on problem analysis, I'd like to just do a quick recap on what the logical framework approach is, as these are two steps in the log logical framework approach. So the logical framework approach is a seven-step method for project planning, and many of you are familiar with it, as it is uh, the preferred way of describing a project for most funders and other stakeholders in development. The seven steps of the approach are as follows. Participant analysis, problem analysis, objectives analysis, alternatives analysis. And those first four steps form the part of the method that analyze the situation or do a contextual analysis. So this is where you get your project team together and look at the whole situation and all of the forces that could affect the success or failure of your project. Step five is defining the project elements, six, assessment of assumptions, and seven, developing indicators. And these are the steps where you're actually designing the project and writing the written project plan. And Though we're just going to cover steps two and three today in this demo, I wanted to just show you what a finished project plan looks like. So this is called a project planning matrix. When you get to the end of booklet three, you will have learned the steps involved in constructing this for your own organization. But as you can see, it's a very orderly uh, matrix of project elements indicators, means of verification, and assumptions. And right now I just want to have a quick look at some of the major project elements as a basis for doing the problem analysis. And I'm going to start in the middle here with the immediate objective. So just quickly, the immediate objective is also sometimes called the specific objective or the project purpose. And it is meant to describe a change in behavior in your target group or your direct beneficiaries. So these are the people who your project is designed to help. And if you are a member-based organization, these are likely your members. The next project element I want to look at is the overall objective. And this is sometimes also called the project aim or the development goal. And the overall objective describes a change in behavior in your indirect beneficiaries. So the target group is your direct beneficiaries. These are your indirect beneficiaries. And they are people who benefit from your project, but who aren't directly targeted by your project. And they're usually benefiting through association with your target group. So they can be members of your target group's families, they can be their co-workers or community members. They could be government officials or police officials or law enforcement officials. Anyone in the community or the families of the target group who will indirectly benefit from the project. And then outcomes. Outcomes are also sometimes called expected results or results. And they describe changes in condition not behavior this time, but changes in condition that are created by you, by the organization who is doing the project work. So I just want to use a quick example to illustrate what I've been talking about here. So for example, imagine that you are a member-based organization and you want to create a change in condition for your members who are home-based workers. And the change in condition you want to create is giving your members access to equipment they need to improve productivity. And this is the change in condition. You've gone from no access to uh, the tools and now they have access to the tools. This is an outcome. 
This is the changing condition that you've created for your target group. Now because the outcome has been achieved, your target group can now make a change in behavior, which is earning more income. That's the immediate objective. And because the target group has achieved the immediate objective, this in turn will influence the indirect beneficiaries, who in turn will be able to change their behavior. And that could be things like better health, education, social security, etc. Any behavior in the indirect beneficiaries that is targeted as an overall objective by your project. So here you see an overview of the flow of logic through the log frame and through the different project elements and the different actors in the project design. So now that we've done this basic overview of the logical flow of the logical framework, I'd like to return to the concept of the problem analysis. The logical framework approach is a seven-step method for project planning, as we discussed, and it's also problem-based, and this is very important. So the pro knowing the problem that you seek to solve is a very important foundation to the whole planning process. So let's have a look at that. What is the problem? If you ask a member of your target group to define a significant problem in their lives, what would they tell you? In their own words and from their point of view, the answer to this question is going to form the basis of your problem analysis and it's going to be the seed or the focal problem from which will grow this problem tree. Now the problem tree is a tool you can use with your planning team to discuss the really complex network of cause and effect that surrounds every problem. Causes form the roots of the problems. Effects are the things that flow out of the problems. And the focal problem itself is the trunk of the tree or the center. So if we go back to the example of the home-based worker who is in need of equipment. And imagine that it's pre-project and you've approached this member to ask her what is a significant problem in her life. She could have answered, demand for my products has decreased. Then you would ask her, well, what is the cause or the root of that problem? Why has the demand for your products decreased? Well, I can't make the new products the buyers want is one cause or root. Why can't you make the new products? Because you, I don't have this, the tools and the skills necessary to create the new products. Why don't you have the tools and skills? Because I'm isolated, so I don't know about them, and I don't know how to access them. Another cause or root for the, the decrease in demand is that I don't know which products are in demand. I don't know which things to make. And what is the cause of this problem? Well, I don't, I don't have knowledge of, of the market or links to the market. And why don't I? Again, because I'm isolated. So now that we've looked at causes, let's go back to the focal problem and have a look at effects. Demand for my products has decreased. What is the effect of that? Well, I have insufficient income to meet the basic needs of my family. And because of insufficient income, the effect is I can't get good health care and education for my children. I'm not able to save. And the effect of those two things combined is that I'm unable to improve my situation. So here you have a completed problem tree. This is a very small and simple example of the concept. And I encourage you to Google problem tree or problem analysis and you'll be able to find lots of examples of large complex uh, problem trees that have been created by other organizations which are really great examples of, of how to proceed with your team when you're doing this. But for now, let's stay with our little example here and, and look at how to turn a problem tree into an objective tree. And this is a process by which we turn causes into means and effects into ends. So cause effect becomes means end. Problems become objectives. Not just the focal problem, but all of the problems in the tree. And eventually, 
at the end of that process will have an objective tree instead of a problem tree. So let's start right, right at the bottom at the means or the roots of the tree. We're going to restate each of these problems as if they were positive solutions or objectives and as if they've already happened. So I am isolated becomes I am part of a network of home-based workers. No knowledge of or direct links to markets for goods becomes I have market linkages through my member-based organization. Do not know which products are in demand becomes I'm aware of market demands. Do not have access to tools, skills, resources, etc. becomes I have access to new resources and skills. Cannot make the new products that buyers want becomes I know how to make the new and improved products. Demand for my products has decreased becomes there is an increase in stable demand for my products. Income is insufficient to meet the basic needs of my family becomes my family's basic needs are being met. Cannot get good health care education for my children becomes children are healthy and attending school. Not able to save. I have savings. Unable to improve situation becomes my family has an improved quality of life. So now our objective tree is complete. And this sample has touched on a quick demonstration of step two problem analysis and step three objectives analysis. I encourage you to refer to booklet one and go through the steps with your planning, your planning team on how to conduct a participant analysis and alternatives analysis also. You'll find those in booklet one. And also to find more details on how to conduct a problem analysis, how to build a problem tree and an objectives tree, and some techniques and rules that I haven't covered in this demonstration. So please uh, refer to booklet one and check out our next demonstration, which will be on defining the project elements, where we're going to take the objectives tree one step further and actually start writing the project plan. In the meantime, thanks for listening. Talk to you soon.